Hello, 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 and welcome back to Stupid Game Experiments. I'm Axel Cannon, and my current stupid experiment is building the same game in three of the most popular game engines, Unity, Unreal, and Godot. So today I decided, since I'm making a game in all three game engines, I'd try running a separate mini experiment as well. The experiment is based on this video by Dave's Garage. In this video, he basically does a benchmark speed test comparing C++, C Sharp, and Python. These three languages line up pretty well with the three languages is used in the three game engines. Unity uses C Sharp directly, Godot uses GD script which is based on Python at least in syntax, and Unreal uses C++ under the hood but most users use the visual scripting language blueprints. So I decided recreating this experiment in all three game engines might be fun and educational. However I was pretty much wrong on both counts as I started running into problems almost immediately. First off, the code Dave used for his test was a program that did a search for all the prime numbers under a certain number. I figured this would be easy to reproduce since he goes over all the code in his video. And I was wrong. I tried reproducing the code in Godot first and couldn't get it to work. I'm sure it could work eventually, but after a couple of hours of not getting it to work and not having a clear idea of what I was doing wrong, I decided to stick a fork in it and move on to finding an alternative test. Just to be clear, what code you run for a benchmark like this does matter. Different operations will have larger processing costs than others in different programming languages. However, for this initial experiment, I decided to scrap the complicated prime search and replace it with a simple nested for loop instead. So basically, you put in a number, in this case 1000, and it runs two nested for loops that number of times. Inside the nested loops, it just assigns zero to a local variable each time, and that's it. The reason I did nested for loops is that I wasn't sure how fast this would run, and I didn't want to hit the upper limit for an integer if I had to set the limit extremely high. The nested for loop is then run inside a while loop that runs as many times as it can within the time limit, in this case one second, and records the number of passes and the total time it took to run all the passes. The total time is greater than one second because it will start a pass if it has time remaining before the time limit is reached, but it may take more than the remaining time to complete that pass. Getting all this to work in Godot was pretty straightforward after I finally gave up on the prime search code. Next I moved on to Unreal. This is where the over-engineering of Unreal that I've talked about in other videos has its downside. My first problem with Unreal was getting the time tracker to work. Blueprints does have a single node called now to get the current time, but it outputs it as a date time struct when all I really wanted was the time in milliseconds. It took me a while to figure out that Unreal has all kinds of useful operators for comparing date time structs and conducting math operations. All of this functionality is great, but it did take extra time to figure it all out. My other major problem with Unreal was that it kept throwing an infinite loop error. This made me think I had screwed up my code somewhere. It took me a while to figure out that I wasn't actually running an infinite loop. I was just hitting the loop limit of 1 million. Fortunately, I could change this limit in the properties editor, which I did, and I was finally able to run the program all the way through. As I said, both of these problems emerge from the fact that Unreal is really kind of over-engineered for simple problems like these. I can understand why people would get frustrated with Unreal when they just want to do something simple, and it requires them to learn 10 other things they don't really care about. However, as we'll see next in Unity, the alternative isn't too great either. For the most part, Unity was pretty straightforward. It actually uses a similar date time object setup to the one Unreal uses, however I didn't have as much trouble with it in Unity. This might be because I had already done it in Unreal. Or it might be because when searching for answers the results I found were more precise to what I was looking for. So really this is probably on par with Unreal, or maybe a little better based on this being one of those cases where having more users and using a common language like C Sharp leads to more precise answers online. My real problem with Unity was again the infinite loop problem. As it turns out, I didn't actually have an infinite loop in my code. However, when I initially created the time comparison, I got the total time in seconds, but set the comparison to 1000 because my mind was still on milliseconds. The result was that when I ran the game, it basically froze because it was trying to run for 1000 seconds. When this happened, there was no way to stop the game. I ended up having to kill Unity and restart it before I could go in and try to figure out what the problem was. So I ended up with problems from both the over-engineering of Unreal and the lack of functionality in Unity. In most cases though, I think the infinite loop check in Unreal is better than not having one in Unity because in most cases, if you hit that limit, you probably really are in an infinite loop. Overall though, for this little experiment, I wouldn't say that any of the engines did better or worse in terms of programming challenge. They all had their individual bumps and nuances and it was just a matter of working through those. However, when it comes to the results of the challenge, there were massive differences and one major surprise. Starting with Godot, it managed to get 13 passes completed in one 
1038 milliseconds. Independently, this probably doesn't mean much, so let's compare it to Unity. Unity was able to run 1596 passes in almost exactly 1000 milliseconds. That's over a 100 fold performance increase from Godot to Unity. That's quite an increase, but it's not terribly surprising either. This is actually close to the same results that Dave's Garage got when comparing C Sharp to Python. There is a slight caveat to this though, which is actually highlighted even better in Unreal Engine. Unreal is where the massive surprise comes in. It ended up taking Unreal around four full seconds for a single pass. This is insane, especially since C++ would normally run faster than C Sharp would. So what's accounting for this massive difference? Well, I suspect that it comes down to the fact that I ran all three of these tests in the editors rather than compiling the projects and running them independently. And I believe that Blueprint specifically doesn't get fully optimized until the game is fully packaged. This was partially confirmed when I ran it again as a standalone game and was able to get four passes completed in roughly a second. That is roughly a 16 fold improvement. Still, I never would have guessed that it could cause this massive of a difference. This is why I said in the beginning, I don't know how educational these results actually are. Without further testing, I can't draw that many conclusions except holy crap, Blueprints runs really slow in the editor. I suspect that the difference between C Sharp and GD Script will remain, but I won't be confident in that conclusion without further testing. And really that's the main conclusion to be drawn from this little mini experiment. I plan on this being just a fun, quick mini experiment, but apparently it's going to be this whole side project instead. If you have any thoughts or suggestions about what I should do going forward, make sure to leave them in the comments below. If you want to see more of these types of experiments, make sure you also hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.